Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Marcus Buchesha Almeida. You finally have an opponent for Friday. Hugo Cunha is out. Zasu Mirza Mukamadov is in. How pleased are you just to have a fight? And what's it been like dealing with these ups and downs with these opponents? Yeah, just like you said, it's been a roller coaster. And it's really annoying to train for a guy and switch last minute and keep switching. But just like you said, finally, I have a fight. So I'm happy with that because really a lot of respect for my opponent to get the fight like with short Norris. So it doesn't matter my opponent. The goal is going to be the same. And I'm glad I have a fight. Mirza Mukamadov is 5-0 and from Uzbekistan. Is he a tougher fight than Hugo Cunha? Uh, what do you know about him? Have you had a look at him? Yeah, no, for sure. He's, I know he has a really good background on uh, Muay Thai, uh, Muay Thai world champion. So I know he's a dangerous guy, dangerous striking, but really different of uh, Cunha because Cunha was more a grappler, Jiu-Jitsu black belt. So it's a completely different game. Well, it really doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't really matter because if I want to fight, if I want to fight against the best, I have to be ready for any situation. So change the game, change the strategy, but the goal is still the same. How important was it for you that you had to fight in May, that you had to make sure that you got a fight in? Uh, no, not really, because like I was supposed to fight in March, then got uh, skipped for April and then push for me. So I've been training since February, so I don't want to waste uh, a training camp because it's too much on your body, too much on the head, right? There's a lot of mental to train. Like I'm training since, since February, so I just want to fight. You know, I don't want to like keep pushing, pushing because I remember last year, my first fight supposed to be February and then I just fought in September. So I didn't want to happen the same thing this year. So that's why I, I want to keep fighting. I want to keep active because I want to keep fighting at least three times a year. So if keep skipping, keep pushing month after month, so then I'm going to fight just September. So I don't, I don't like that. I want to fight at least three fights, maybe four, who knows. But I want to keep really active in the organization. What have you been working on since we last saw you? What are you most pleased with from training? Pretty much everything. So it's MMA, so you have to be complete in every everywhere all the aspects so my striking is really good my grappling is got better and my wrestling so feeling really confident with everything right now every time i train every time i come here i feel more comfortable than the the, the previous time who are your main training partners for this one I have a lot, a lot of heavyweights there. Uh, Marcelo Gom, uh, Marcos Rogério, Pezão, uh, Clidson Abreu, uh, Saíd Soa, Júnior dos Santos, uh, Jairzinho, uh, uh, Zé Colmeia, and I think that's the, the main partners that I have. Uh, Cara de Sapato, all these guys, the ones that I train the most, of course, and daily with my coaches, uh, Catel Kubis, my striking coach, uh, wrestling coaches, Stevie Moko and King Mo, uh, my Jiu Jitsu coach, Leonardo Vieira, and my conditioning coach, Diego Lacerda. They've been helping me so much to get here, to get, to get, to be a hundred percent. And they help me to be ready for this fight one more time. For many years, you've been one of the best in jiu-jitsu in your weight class. From what we've seen of you already, you look exceptional in MMA. How far away are you from being the best in the world at heavyweight in MMA, do you think? Yeah, I just, I just started. So I have just two fights. And I know I just getting started. But just like you said, I had a good beginning. So I started with the right foot. I know I'm going the right path. But still a lot to go. So I'm not even close where I can be. And I'm learning, I'm evolving, I'm getting better every day, but still a lot to, to get better, still a lot to, to go. So I know it's just my life. I still like baby steps for where I wanna, where I wanna go, where I wanna be. 
We've seen two beautiful finishes from you in the first round. What do you hope to get out of this fight? Does a part of you want to get a bit more cage time? Being honest, whatever whatever I see, I, I take, you know what I mean? So if I see a good opportunity to take down, I'll do it. If I see a good opportunity to strike, uh, I'm going to do it. So it's hard to predict a fight. It depends because it depends how, a lot of the how my opponent is going to react, how he's going to do it. So I can't plan one thing, but he can like have a completely different strategy of what I'm thinking. So I don't like to think too much about like, oh, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to try to take it down this time. So I'm going to try to strike. So it's a fight, I feel. That's how I did my whole life in my grappling career. So not really planning too much, but feeling more the fight and how the fight goes. It's all there. It just happens. You mentioned some pretty amazing names and your training partners, and you faced some hard hitting guys in one championship. Who's the guy who's hit you the hardest, would you say? Uh, in training? In training or in a fight? Who hits the hardest, you mean? You said? Yes. Yes. <sighs> I'm, ha I'm glad that I didn't get hit in the, my first two fights, so I don't know <laughs> about my opponents, but in training. I uh, have a, like a lot of tough guys there that beat me up every day, but I think the one that did the most is Marcelo Gom. <laughs> Interesting. And uh, are you pleased with your striking? Your striking looks very impressive. H how much has it evolved, would you say? Yeah, it's getting better. I'm getting really confident with my hands, so I can't wait to, to show in, to everyone because the last two fights was like I didn't have to use but feeling really confident with my striking every time feeling much better so soon everyone will see you said you want to fight three or four times a year so if there were no problems who would you like to fight next who would be a good opponent for you and being honest like I don't even know because now just to have a fight I'm really happy so I don't even worry about the names anymore because I know it can, the fight can change the last minute, like the last one, like every time in the, the week of the event, the fight just drops. So I'm not going to worry too much about that because it's kind of frustrating, but I hope I can have somebody to fight soon. I know you said baby steps, but considering that you already have a first round victory over someone like Kang Ji Wan, you're not very far away from the top of the division. So how long do you think before we see you in a title fight? Uh, I don't know. That's not up to me. But I know I'm, I'm still a lot to learn and to get better. So soon I'm going to be ready. But I think right now is not the time. So I need to get a little bit more experience. Uh, but that's the ultimate goal. That's I'm training for that. And Soon I'm going to be fighting for, for that, but just like I said, I'm still, still learning, still new in the game, but that's the goal. So soon I'll be there. And are you interested in taking on uh, Gordon Ryan or Andre Galvao in, in grappling, or would you prefer an MMA fight? I prefer an MMA fight because that's what I'm training most of the time. So, but of course, if the division get really excited and if I see somebody getting a grappling belt, something that's going to itch in my the back of my head and i'm probably going to try to to get the belt too so but for now i'm not thinking too much but in the future in the future it's going to be something that i'm going to going to try to 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 have for sure so but no interesting right now in this moment i want to get i want to spend like if i have to spend a training camp I will use that for MMA, so not for training jiu-jitsu. But just like I said, if I see somebody holding a belt, a grappling belt, maybe like, okay, now it's time for to do something, but not right now. We saw Rainier de Ritter managed to get a draw with Andre Galvao, and he stopped by your gym. He actually stopped by to see a few different one championship fighters. Has he impressed you uh, when you met him and what you've seen from him? Yeah, yeah, no, really, uh, really nice guy, really tough guy. Uh, we had the opportunity to train a little bit, so it was good because he's like double champ of the organization. So it was really good for me to train with him. And 
But like, just like I, uh, just like you said, it was like really interesting. It was good training. We've seen two first round finishes from you. Uh, is it possible to kind of predict how this one will go? Are we going to see another early submission here? Is that what you're feeling? Early submission for me is the perfect fight. So I always looking for the perfect fight. So it's hard to see, to say how it's going to be because it depends. Whatever the opponent give to me, I'll take it. So I don't plan too much, but I'm looking for a one more perfect fight. That would be like one more first round submission. That's the ultimate goal for every fight on the percent. Let's say you get another first round submission. They give you the microphone where you make a call out. To me, somebody else? Yeah. I didn't think too much about that yet, but let's see. Maybe right, if I get the victory, we will see. Well, we'll be uh, most intrigued to look at that one. Maximum respect to you, sir. It's great to see you back, and I'm glad you got a fight. Cheers. Me too. Thank you so much.